welcome everybody to another session of Artist Talks. Today we have a special guest and we're going to be talking about how the arts can come for circle as a place for inspiration and then as a place for us to um, experience fabulous art. So I'm very happy to welcome today Gary Bremen. He's a park ranger and curator for the Biscayne National Park. Hi Gary, thank you so much for being here Hi. today. How are so you glad doing? glad to be here. Doing as well as can be expected during these times, I reckon. That's true. Um, so I invited you here today because we're hosting the exhibitions Pollinators by the Tropical Botanical Artists at Bailey Contemporary Arts. And that exhibition was premiered in your organization. So can you share with us some of the insights into the importance of this show, the importance of pollinators and pollination and how this relationship with this group of artists came to be. Sure. So uh, uh, I guess first off, a lot of people don't really think about the connection between the arts and national parks. You know, they seem to be drastically different. But in fact, if it weren't for artists, the national parks might not exist. And that's because back in the 1870s when people were first exploring out at Yellowstone and promoting that as the world's very first national park, you know, people couldn't Google it. People couldn't look up to see what this place looked like that they were telling them about. And most people had never been there because it's so remote. And uh, so what they did is they brought a painter, Thomas Moran, and they brought a photographer, William Henry Jackson, along on the expedition. And it was those photos and paintings, and, and there were sketch artists as well. And uh, with those things, the National Park was, was established. And so this connection between national parks is something that we continue at Biscayne National Park as a way to bridge that, that gap that really isn't a gap at all, though people seem to make it like one. So at Biscayne National Park, we often have um, art exhibits. We have four a year. And we try and make sure, we always make sure, that the art relates to the park in some way. And being a primarily marine park, 95% of Biscayne National Park is covered by water, um, a lot of people forget that we do have land as well. So Biscayne National Park's relationship with the tropical Tropical Botanic Artists began many, many years ago when I asked them if they would consider, instead of painting coconuts and crotons and palm trees <laughs> and the things that uh, these folks usually paint in gorgeous detail, would they consider do so doing something a little bit different? And I asked them to paint algae because most of Biscayne National Park is covered by water and that is a dominant plant form that a lot of people don't know about. And one of the artists, uh, her response was, you mean like pond scum? And I, <laughs> I said, no, no, not exactly. They're actually quite beautiful. And so these artists that were used to painting terrestrial things suddenly moved underwater. And it was an absolutely gorgeous show that went on to tour a variety of different venues. And that was the start of our relationship with tropical botanic artists. They then went on and did an exhibit of diatoms another marine plant, microscopic marine plant. They did that all on their own and it came to us as well. Um, they've done one called Friends or Foe and it was about relationships between plants and animals. And, uh, and then pollinators came along and that too is another one that's a relationship between plants and animals. And uh, Pollinators, of course, are so incredibly important to everything. If you enjoy plants, if you enjoy flowers, if you enjoy food, pollinators are really important to you too. And so um, whether it's a bee or a butterfly or a variety of other things, the pollinator show even includes a tiny little marine animal that pollinates the plants that live in Biscayne Bay, the turtle grass that is a flowering plant underneath. And, uh, you know, I love that they researched that and found that and included that. So it's a scientifically accurate exhibit while at the same time being just gorgeous to look at. Yeah, it was, it was really interesting when I was um, researching. This is the second exhibition that they have at Bailey Contemporary Arts. And um, what you're telling about the being 
that being so specific and so accurate, um, it really caught my attention because the, the tropical or the botanical artist is really a field. And it also has a lot of uh, relationships with different botanical institutions and it helps illustrate um, articles that get published in research. So the accuracy level that these artists have is scientific. And so I really didn't know about that. So I, I am, I'm very appreciative that um, we cross paths with the tropical botanical artists and that we're able to feature um, these flora and fauna that are so key anyway to um, South Florida, to Florida. So it's an exhibition that is relevant to our place and our time. Um, I wanted to ask you about uh, going back to Biscayne National Park. Um, what what other art programs do you have in that institution? I also know that there is a, the national some national parks have an artist in residence program. Um, is there anything else that you can expand on that? Sure. Well, um, as I may have mentioned earlier, Biscayne National Park uh, hosts four exhibits a year. So every three months we have a new exhibit of artworks. Sadly, because of what the world is going through right now, nobody's seeing the one that is installed right now. It's a gorgeous uh, exhibit of ceramics. We've extended it through the summer, but we're still not open. So that's, that's sad. But we hope that, uh, that we'll be able to open our fall show. We try and uh, do stuff in a wide variety of media. So it's not just painting and drawing. As I said, we have a ceramics show. Um, we've had sculpture. We've had um, lots of photography. We've even had fish printing and, and fiber works. So some really extraordinary stuff. And some of our shows have gone on to travel the country. Um, one of them was seen by a quarter million people around the country at wow. 12 different venues that we uh, traveled it to. So, and indeed, other national parks also have artist programs. And some do have an artist in residence program where the artists would go and stay for a period of time, a week, two weeks, a month, a summer, something like that. And uh, sometimes they're housed in some really extraordinary places too, you know, an old cabin from the 1800s in the woods or the gatehouse at uh, Cadia National Park that was built by the Rockefellers, you know, something <laughs> really extraordinary out there. We have always uh, dreamed of having an artist in residence program at Biscayne National Park that would be housed at Stiltsville, which is a collection of wow. seven buildings out in the water. The boat access is, is a difficult thing. <laughs> if something terrible should happen, access to them, people getting off and that kind of stuff is a little bit of a hassle. But um, yeah, the opportunities in national parks for inspiration are amazing. You know, people like Ansel Adams and Albert Bierstadt and um, right. uh, Clyde Butcher here in South Florida, mm -hmm. they've staked their entire career on being inspired by national parks. And so we're trying to, um, to continue that. It's, it's fascinating because um, like a person on my field, we always think about arts in museums and galleries. But when you go and when you think about arts being promoted and being exhibited and shown in nature is really for me thinking full, full circle. You can be inspired by art, but then give it back somehow. Um, and I, I know that there's also people that they travel and photograph the 50 uh, national parks recently for the 100th centennial. So it is, it's a, it's a movement. People, like you said, they can make their entire life goals to, to visit all the parks. Yeah, that's what I've done. And, and actually, <laughs> there's 419 national parks. And um, I've, I've been fortunate to have been to 252 of them. Oh, my God. And, okay, uh, my number is this cute. <laughs> well, your number, I know where you got your number. Your number is, um, it's actually 62 now. And that's the ones that say <laughs> national park at the end. But a lot of people forget that national monuments, national battlefields, national historic sites are also... Um, national parks. So, you know, the Statue of Liberty is a piece of art and it is a national park. And we have national parks that are entirely dedicated to the arts. So outside Washington, D.C. is the Wolf Trap Farm Park for the performing arts, where you can go watch dance, concerts, uh, drama, all that kind of stuff. Up in Connecticut is the home of J. Alden Weir, one of the great American Impressionists. And his home is a national park out in California near wow. San Francisco, Eugene O'Neill's home, the playwright. Um, so mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. And then then the art itself, as controversial as it is, Mount Rushmore is a national park and that is a piece of art. 
certainly Statue of Liberty, um, the architecture. So we, we take art to the broadest, uh, broadest ability. We do storytelling programs at Biscayne National Park. We have concerts. Um, so, you know, the performing arts are important as well. That, thank you. You just brought in my idea <laughs> to an ex uh, time. And so how about you as a, someone who's exposed to so much uh, or so many artistic expressions? Have you been uh, tickled by the creative and the creative process? Have you created something? I have. I, I've always said that I, um, I live vicariously through my artists, and I call them my artists, the people that are in my gallery that I started, right? And of course, it's the people's gallery. But, um, and I, I, I'm a writer and a storyteller and whatnot as well. But during this pandemic, I was looking for something to do creatively because I miss being with people. And uh, <laughs> so I went on to Skillshare, this wonderful website of creative people, <laughs> And I took this little class that inspired me to uh, create a project where I'm doing watercolor paintings. I have zero training whatsoever. <laughs> and um, for 100 days, one painting a day, and I spend time here in my backyard and I find a new flower or a new lizard or something like that. Lately, I've been going through my travel photos. And um, you know, when you, when you do something consistently, you really do start to learn and get better. And I'm blowing myself away with, you know, and nothing, nothing's ever going to end up in a gallery, mind you. But <laughs> to me, it's like, wow, I actually sort of doing better at this. So um, it's been fun. That's, that's, that's wonderful. It's great to hear a lot of people have been, you know, going to, especially in these times where we are being locked down or spend so much time at home. Um, I, I, I heard of people that they're doing art or some sort of creative outlet at this at this time um, and, and just just one more tiny little thing on that yeah. the the real advantage to me is yes i'm doing the art i'm feeling creative but i am discovering my own little world right here around me in a brand new way i love my yard i i'm sitting out <laughs> under this awning that we built years ago that i hardly ever use and i'm out here every day now and it's just made me realize that you know, all this stuff that you hear in the news about the politics and, and the horrible things going on in our country, we're really darn lucky that we have places like my own backyard that where I, I don't have to wear a mask here. I don't have to <laughs> worry about so many things. I'm extremely lucky and a lot of people in the world are not. And so it's, it's, it's made me feel um, quite fortunate. Yeah, it's important to be able to also see things every day. Like every day I have a, a walk with my kids and it's the same path and there's different things. But so far we've seen the process of how mangoes ripe and then fall down. We've seen when we talked about ducks and the mother duck seeding. And so we're talking about the eggs. So every day through the same path is discovery. And I'm talking about neighborhood, you know, there's cars, but there's also trees and we sure. look at the clouds and we talk about the, the different types of clouds. So um, yeah, it's important to learn from the routine, how to make it exciting too. And, you know, hopefully times will go back to some sort of normal again. But in the meantime, um, I think that what you said, I agree. I mean, many of us are fortunate and uh, I'm thankful for that. Well, this concludes our artist talk today. So I want to thank our special guest today, Gary Bremen, for expanding our minds about arts and nature. So thank you, Gary. Thanks for having me. It's been great. It's been great. So thank you, everybody, for watching us today. Stay tuned for our next artist talks. 